Good afternoon. I'm Jeff Dalton, and we're going to talk about the CMMI. Today's question comes from Jim in Minneapolis. He writes, Hey, appraiser, why is it that we have to worry so much about these generic practices? Seems like a big headache to me. Well, Jim, the generic practices probably should have been named the most important practices. The CMMI, as you know, is a model that helps us build better software and helps us run better projects. But the generic practices apply to all process areas in the CMMI, and like I said, I would have called them the most important practices. To get a view of what I'm talking about, open up your CMMI for product development book, CMMI Dev version 1.3, and just open it up to the inside cover and look on the right-hand side. Right on the right, you'll see 13 practices, starting with Generic Practice 1.1, GP 1.1, and going all the way through to Generic Practice 3.2, GP 3.2. Remember that these practices apply to all process areas within the CMMI. So if you're planning, whether it's a traditional waterfall type of plan or whether you're planning a sprint backlog, these practices apply. If you're writing code, whether you're writing C or Java or C Sharp, these practices apply. If you're holding code reviews, whether they be informal email-based code reviews or very rigid Fagan inspections, these practices all apply. So regardless of what type of method or technique or process that you choose to use, the generic practices can really help jumpstart uh, the success of those practices. These generic practices apply to things that the organization performs, not things that individual projects necessarily perform, although some of them uh, do have some relationship to project activities. Things like setting very clear expectations for what kinds of activities we want to see in our company. Things like how long are our sprints and what kind of retrospectives do we have and what kind of code reviews do we run. And do we, should we comment our code and how should we comment it? And all of these expectations that we set so that our people know exactly what we want them to do to be, to be the most successful. It includes things like planning the process. How many sprints are we going to have? How many phases are we going to have? How many releases are we going to have? All of those things around planning for process performance. What kind of requirements management tools are we going to use? Who's going to be involved? When are they going to be involved? Assigning responsibility and making it clear who does what within a given process are also contained with the generic practices. My favorite one, training. Generic practice 2.5. If I'm going to ask you to perform planning poker and to use that as a way to uh, estimate the size of a project or the size of a particular user story, yes, I need to train you on how to use those tools because planning poker is no different conceptually from Kokomo or Wideband Delphi in that they are project estimation or user story estimation methodologies that we all need to know how to use appropriately. Some other things that generic practice talks about, the generic practices talk about identifying the right people to be involved in a particular project or particular process, when they should be involved, and tracking whether or not they're involved or not. Another one is monitoring the health of the process. How is it working? Are we getting the right value out of our sprints, out of our phases, out of the tools that we're using, out of the techniques we're employing? Are we getting value? And if we're not getting value, why not? And let's make them better. It includes practices like, are people actually using these processes? And if they're not, why not? And let's look into that. And are, is management paying attention to all of this data? And are they doing something about it to help make the company an even better company? Finally, the last couple of generic practices, generic practice 3.1 and 3.2, focus on defining processes at the project level and are we continuously improving the process. So GP 3.2 codifies the fact that we're continuously improving and how we're doing that. So these generic practices apply to every single process area in the CMMI model and really should apply to every single technique that you employ at your location. So that's why I call the generic practices the most important practices and not the generic practices. So thanks for your question and we'll look forward to hearing from you another time. Thanks a lot.